Well, hello everyone, Dylan here. Happy Throwback Thursday, and here with another kind of random uh, review for Throwback Thursday. And this one's on actually one of a pair that I'm going to be doing of SpongeBob sets, even though I did review a few previously. But yeah, but here I am with just for a couple more times. But yeah, but this one's on Adventures in Bikini Bottom from 2006, of course. So, starting out with the four things included with this set. First of which is the classic SpongeBob fig. Which, and of course, how this works like is almost like a, like Chewbacca and some others is where it's a whole thing that separate piece that goes over a traditional torso piece and also has traditional uh, short legs which. If he were done now, I think it'd probably be dual molded, of like, uh, or at least have a lot of prints to it with you know black and yellow, with black and white and yellow, for the shoes and socks, of course. And as for the face printing, done quite well for that, but without the nose protruding like you'd often sometimes expect. And also, also if done nowadays, I think probably have dual molded arms for the white sleeves on top. But besides that, quite good for how it is and also a single stud on top so you can attach certain bits to it like obviously make a custom uh, what's it called crusty crew hat of course and such. And then next to which is Patrick Star which uh, which quite good for how it is like obviously new specific headpiece made just for him and also with the Lord smile to there and kind of a plainish uh, torso printing but also well fitting to him and also the uh, main shorts of which which kind of well captured the appearance from the show but just very little to that and also just on the front not on the sides for that which if done nowadays would probably be dual molded of like a just regular pink and lime green for that, of course. So, and then last of which is the older version of Squidward, which with the uh, torso printing, which looking quite plain and well good for how it is, and also the leg pieces of which, leg part just kind of the same as that, although it would be nice if there was printing to represent the four legs for that and also let the arms be dual molded with tan on top to represent the top part of the shirt and also the uh, face print which is kind of the most oddest part of it is has a traditional headpiece and the face print is just printed on it but however it's kind of just in a smiling expression as you can see but however Squirrel, Squidward barely much smiles in the show but However, but they did fix that up with the later versions of Squidward with had a, that had a specific headpiece for that. So this, of course, this which was kind of a kind of first run of that. And then last of which is Gary the Snail, which as you see is has a, a cherry piece in lime green to represent the eye stock parts and also lime green for the bomb part, which kind of fitting to him. But also, but although I think this cherry piece should have been in blue, since in and also the clip part should be in blue, since obviously in the show he's bright blue. And as for these uh, shell dish pieces representing the shell, which which have some good printing to them, but although I think should be in pink, well, at least they kind of fixed that on later versions of that. And then on to the back side of it, which I think should have some uh, a curved, a couple of curved slopes in pink to fill the gap in, and also not at all any back torso printing on all of them, since they're quite plain ones and nothing much going from the back, of course. So this minifig selection as a whole, just great, just about right for a set like this. But yeah, and then first up for the builds of which is this. A little catapult piece just 
few pieces together in a couple technique bits to it and press on it and uh, flings off like so. Uh, hang on. And well, what can you want off from this? Well, I'll show that in a little bit later. Yeah. And then also another capital piece is this one with a, a neck, jellyfish neck piece, which is just a few jagged slopes and also these green cone bits, probably representing kelp slash seaweed. For them. And then as for the rest of which, which is kind of the same thing for that. And also nice to see this neck piece, which first introduced in the Fabuland line from the 1980s, but kind of interesting seeing this piece here in a mid-2000s set for that. And of course you can like, like take this off and let SpongeBob and Patrick you wield this to go jellyfishing. And so that's about it with these two. And now onto this little carriage kind of part. For or this little wagon kind of part, which is just a plate with wheel bits on below, and then a bunch of clear panel pieces, of which, and there's a few bits on top, or a couple plates and a ratchet plate on top, of course. And also this part with a T bar for a handle. And you basically can like open this up. Oh, wait, it's on one side. We can open this up and get out the jellyfish, which are just uh, chef hat pieces or totes, whatever you call them, but in trans pink, which nice, great use of this piece and works out quite well for jelly as a jellyfish, of course. And also, would be nice if there could be one of these in trans blue representing old no name. But as for the catapults mentioned earlier, Loaded onto there and then locked off like so. And same thing with the other one. And so nice to have a bit of extra things going on in this. And that's about it there. And now onto this one boatmobile. Which is comprised of mostly a couple of inverted jagged slopes and a few plates going on to it, and wedge plates to give it a boat look to it, and a little propeller on the back, which all boat mobiles tend to have. And also this uh, car back part to it, and of course a steering wheel piece so you can take anything you want and stick right on to there, of course. And also down below is the, the large bulky pullback motor, or of course, which we which kind of saw in most earlier speeder or racer sets and such. But in this case, for that, and of course, we all know how these work. Like, they pull back and let go. Let's see that. And of course, these kind of features. Never get old. It's always quite fun to have. Let's see that again. Yeah, there. And then also, do you get this little bed for that goes in the SpongeBob house for that, which I'll show soon. As you see, just made of a few bricks and also a couple plates on top, and one white plate with a pill with a pillow on it, and then. A couple of cylinders representing bamboo uh, back uh, bed part of it, and also a little uh, rounded plate on top of which, and also the nightstand with the uh, foghorn uh, alarm clock for that. And the main feature with that, if you notice the rubber band on there, is if you like put SpongeBob on there. And when I pull on this end, launches him right off. Like he off like he, like he does a lot of times throughout the show. Right there. And that's about it there. 
And then now onto the three houses of of what's called Conch Drive, of course. First up is Patrick's Rock. See, it's just made of two a uh, bit small, smallish, mid ugly or mid mid size ugly rock pieces. That's for that, and resting on a pair of uh, light gray and tan uh, plates for that. And on top is a little antenna, but although not like weather vane style, which if done now, probably be like that, of course, be like arrow shaped, of course. But an interesting thing is, if you notice in a lot of times in the show, or throughout the show, they just, it just goes up and down. Or just goes up and down, like that. But in the case of this set, you just open it up and shows various things in it. Like, do you have a blue plate piece or blue chair to sit Patrick into and uh, stand with a red coffee mug? Kind of common in most sets. And also a, a 1x2 brick with a TV to represent a TV on it. Although, I think probably better in tan since, of course, most of the stuff in Patrick's Rock is just made of sand, of course. You know, bottom feeders. And then, that, so I guess that's about it with Patrick's Rock here. And now, on to uh, Squidward's house, otherwise Monument House. Which, as you see, kind of unique build to that. But, but, of course, we did get a second version of that, but a little bit better for that. But if this were done now, I think probably a lot better than so like this front part of which, which is comprised of a traditional door kind of piece that opens in and outwards and also has a few odd uh, or a few bricks and plates in there, although should be in dark green, which the interior of Squidward's house usually is. Then, and then this upper part of which was this whole specific or big large specific piece is that represent the upper part of which which we probably see in most fancy era castle sets and of course have extra plates and representing the large eyebrow and and a uh, big nose for that and then also ear parts but represent but missing windows then and also if you notice these window parts in it, how they go like, which I'll show in a show soon for them. And on, on top of which is just a couple of jagged slopes in a couple spots for that. Although maybe you could have included a little tanning bed for Squidward to lie down on, of course. And then backside, which which is quite hollow, vacant, and then which this part, which is comprised of a few. Uh, jagged slopes and bricks where that can slide open and see a little bit more of everything going on in there. And as you see, not much of anything going on there. But like the upper spot of which, which would usually contain bedroom and art gallery, and then which just has these couple of technic bits and that come upwards and make the ice in the front. And if you like watch a jellyfish at it, launch knocks them right over for that. Maybe to represent uh, breaking the windows, of course. Which, if this were done now, I would expect there to be a little more sort of going on for that, and also more accuracy to that. Yeah. And then lastly is SpongeBob's uh, trademark pineapple house. So, with, so quite a unique uh, build to it. And of course, first time we ever had uh, this particular building of course which I see quite a lot of orange going on to it which orange not the most common color of Lego but however having a lot of it in a single set to it great to have just like we have with the night bus in Harry Potter of course or with purple with the night bus in Harry Potter of course like this uh, outer part section which is has starts with plates and then also just Brick stacked on bricks, and also with few jagged slopes around it. But also, how the some plates and also hinges are like 
black in red. Uh, not sure why not make them in orange or at least black. Represent the lines going around it, of course. Then this window, these uh, parts of which representing windows, which also used on the Bikini Bomb Express set a couple years later. Right for that, nice to see there. And then, then of course, have the door that has the uh, pirate ship uh, steering wheel piece to that, obviously representing the door handle uh, for that. And of course, can swing right open and then kind of get enter right into it. And then the one side of which we have some more of that, and also a few cylinders and a tap piece and cone piece representing a, a chimney smokestack. To that. And then these like, and also a bunch of orange wedge pieces and dish piece to the roof part and the three uh, palm tree uh, leaf parts representing the top leaf part of it, of course. Then as for the back side of which, which as of now is like not fully enclosed for that, but you can like swivel it open and then there's all like one big wall for that. So this feature, just about like the uh, Hagrid's hut sets in Harry Potter, and also the older uh, Yoda's hut set in Star Wars, for that. Nice to see that in something outside those two themes. So like one section of which we have kind of a ladder piece that goes up to a plate on and clip kind of parts to it, to which is would be above the bed part, representing when he would like hop off that board onto something. And then of course have a random basketball hoop piece which just reused from the like sports theme sets or sports theme from a few years earlier. And also you have this a uh, couple of holder kind of pieces kind of uh, pieces that hold this little basketball piece to put in like so. Although you do get two of that in this set, I just kind of lost the other, but yeah. All the, in the other versions of it, they, I think they probably, they just didn't have this kind of part to it, I'm not sure. But correct, let me know in the comments, but although if this were all done now, I would expect to probably some various stuff from that, like the desk from the episode procrastination or uh, the uh, hanging uh, tackle decoration and so on and also stereos from the episode jellyfish jamming and I think that could that's about it and of course close up like so and also do have these random archway pieces is with a couple more jacket slopes on there uh, not sure why still in red, although still would like that to be in orange, obviously, but maybe that would have been a little much, but yeah. Let me get everything here. So now on to the final verdict on this set. Overall, this is a, a quite good set for how it is. Like you do get all three houses from the usual spots throughout the show of SpongeBob, and of course have the three main or three of some of the main characters of that. And of course the uh, important pair, uh, SpongeBob and Patrick, of course. Although there have been a couple versions of that, but just didn't include the other two houses for that. Well, one which did include it, uh, Squidward's mind and house, but yeah. But although, if this set were all remade nowadays, I would expect, I would say, not have the other three parts of it, but let them all be much better with more colorful interior spaces like they would traditionally be. Oh, and also, of course, have Squidward include the clarinet and so on. And also, I would think, let there be some more decorative stuff in all three houses, of course. But with this set, for the time of which, like 43 to $40 that it was at, back in 2006, 
they say was quite good for how it is like get playing good playability throughout the set like the pullback boatmobile and so on but also one of the most iconic spots on television as well but yeah and so now if any of you and if any of you still have this set from back in the day well i hope you had some really good memories of it and for those of you that are still looking to get this set i'd say definitely pick it up ebay bricklink mercari whatever and that is it for this video please like comment share and subscribe thank you for watching